Rendering is one of the last things you do in 3D, and most of the time it looks like this. It's slow, expensive, and can actually ruin your PC from this definitely legitimate graph of stats. That's why massive studios dedicate literal warehouses to the task of rendering, but for us, we need to make do with what we've got. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five ways to increase your render speed and take the total time from this to this. This Noise threshold is not only one of the most powerful ways to increase your render speed, but it's also one of the simplest. This setting is available for all Blender builds after 3.0 and can be found under the Render Properties Render tab. Here you'll have the default settings applied, but I want to show you something super cool. This noise threshold slider is like magic, and just by changing these values slightly, we get a wildly different render speed. Increasing this number from the default to 0.1 gives us a render time of eight seconds. Now, for comparison, the default settings had this render at about one minute and 20 seconds. So that's already a huge time saver. Now that's great for speed, but this introduces another pretty big problem here. And you can probably already see it, that is, noise. You can clearly see a ton of it here and mostly in the darker areas of the image. It's a byproduct of using this method and overall it's just disgusting to look at. So to fix this we need to move on to the second method and that is today we've had a national tragedy. Dragons have invaded denoising. This is pretty standard and comes enabled by default with Blender. It's one of those things that's been around for a while, but it's been getting better and better with each Blender update. Essentially, it's a method in which any noise in a render is completely removed using our good friend, AI. And honestly, there's almost no artifacts using this method. Unless of course you're like a psychopath and rendered with one sample. <laughs> So to get this image looking good, there's two methods of denoising to choose from, and this ultimately depends on your hardware. You've got open image denoise and optics. The first option is incredible, and depending on how much noise is in your scene, I would almost always use this option. It's enabled by default, and the results speak for themselves. It's based off of your CPU, so pretty much everyone should have access to this. Optics, on the other hand, is specifically designed for NVIDIA GPUs. Now, the average smooth brain would say, GPU good, optics good. But upon closer inspection, I gotta say, in all honesty, Um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. In all seriousness, test both of these methods out. You might find that one works better than the other because it's all relative to the scene that you're working on. So once you've chosen your method, make sure this denoise checkbox is enabled, hit that render button, and in a few seconds, you'll have yourself this. Now, both these methods have made our render time significantly faster, but there's still some insanely good ways to improve this, starting with method three. This is one of those sleeper methods wherein the optimization is kind of insane. If you're working on large scale scenes like this one, for example, where we have a dense forest, most of these trees will immediately start to chug your PC after a certain amount. Just one of these has about a million polygons. And the moment I duplicate this, one of two things will happen. Either your overall scene memory will double or Blender will crash. Both are not ideal, and this is where instancing comes in. Instead of pressing Shift D to duplicate an object, we can press Alt D. And I want you to pay attention to the poly count when I do this. Did you catch that? I've done this over 10 times now, but the poly count has not changed. This is because all the objects here have been instanced, meaning every single tree you see is using the exact same data as the first tree. So now I can create a huge dense forest and not chug the performance of Blender or my GPU because it's essentially one tree. If we did this the traditional way or God forbid, render an entire animation, each frame our GPU would need to load in the millions of polygons, compile all the shaders, build out the BVH construction, ray trace, shade the pixels, it's a lot. And to truly understand rendering, or even how it works, you need to know a bunch of pretty complex math. I mean, just look at this. That's why I've partnered up with Brilliant.org for this video, because they make the whole process 
way easier to understand with their app. There's literally thousands of lessons here, ranging from math basics all the way to the more complex stuff like vectors and dude, even astrophysics are in here. They add new lessons each month and I'm using Brilliant to touch up on the basics. There's a great course in here that I'd recommend. It's called Everyday Math. It's pretty short, keeps you on your toes and just shows you basic math foundations in a different light. I've been using Brilliant for a while now and genuinely, I am so happy they're sponsoring these videos because I think at a certain point, math becomes this like uncool thing to be passionate about. And if my YouTube analytics are correct, you're like me. You're a 20 plus year old guy. You love video games, memes, 3D, but you probably haven't touched math in a while. If that's even remotely close to you, please click the link in the description because this app was made for people like us. It's gamified learning with the satisfying elements of completing tasks and getting XP, all while sharpening your mind and leveling up your learning. Head to brilliant.org forward slash smeef to get your 30 day free trial and the first 200 people to do that will get 20% off their annual subscription. Click the link and thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Lighting is one of the most important aspects of 3D. And oftentimes a render can be chugging for hours simply due to bad light optimization. Depending on the placement, intensity and scene in general, it can add a ton of time to your renders. This is simply due to the complexity of light paths and how they're calculated. To fix that, we can literally flick a switch and make the whole process way easier to render. In the render tab, come down here to light paths and click on max bounces. There's a few options to fiddle with here, but you really only need to worry about one, and that is the total. Changing this to something like eight, heck, even four, could give you some pretty amazing results, but it is something you've got to feel out for your scene. It's all relative. For example, if you have an interior shot being lit through a window, you probably want to get as many bounces in there as possible because there's so much more work the light needs to do in order to light up that scene. But if you're rendering literally anything else, maybe like a desert floor, you can experiment with a super small amount of bounces. If you're not sure what to choose, there's even a little hamburger menu here with presets to find out what works best for your scene. This is a super powerful method of speeding up our renders, but there's still one more trick that I think you're gonna love. This last trick is actually a combination of three methods that I wish I knew when starting out. So let's run through these one at a time. Decimation. If you have an insanely dense model, it's probably a good idea to decimate this or reduce the poly count. There's a modifier that does all this work for you, which you can find here. And it basically just simplifies the model and removes all the unnecessary details that it might have. To use it, just play with the ratio here until you get to a reasonable poly count. Obviously, don't go crazy with this because you might end up making some nightmare fuel and ruin your model. <laughs> Texture optimization. This one is a no brainer. If your scene is packed with 8K textures, you're gonna have a bad time. It's more information to add during the render process and everything adds up pretty quickly. I would ask, do I really need this much detail for the pebble way back in my shot? The answer is probably no. So just optimize your textures and use the heavy duty stuff for the main subject of the shot. Imposters. These are a fantastic way to optimize your scene while still keeping all the detail. It's a technique that's used heavily in video games. And honestly, it's pretty simple to set up. Essentially, if you have a dense model like this tree and it's super far away from your camera, you don't need to render all that geometry. Instead, you can render out a flat plane image of the tree, bake the normal data into it and have it always facing the camera. This means you're cutting the polygon count from 1 million all the way down to 1 while keeping the detail intact and honestly, you probably wouldn't even notice. Now, even though these five tricks have made our overall render time significantly faster, they're kind of useless if you don't know how to make high quality materials to use them with. And that's why this is the video you want to watch next, because it'll teach you exactly that.